Hello, church. I hope your practice of silent listening for God's voice was helped by yesterday's scripture passage. There's another great phrase in today's passage. He gave power to become the children of God. You might listen carefully for it as we read and reflect in just a moment. This experience of 40 days of fasting and prayer is grounding us in Jesus as a whole community of faith. We will experience a strengthening of God's gift, the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. What binds us together is that we is what we encounter today in verse 13, our shared identity as the children of God. Let's read together John chapter 1 verses 10 through 13. He, Jesus, was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. John highlights a key idea which will emerge in the rest of his gospel. Receiving Jesus is believing in his name, that he is the Son of God, the Word, the light which shines in the darkness. There's no talk of sin and forgiveness here. That's kind of interesting to us. There is only talk of believing and not believing. Believing in Jesus makes us God's children and aligns us with the beautiful work God is doing. Not believing disconnects us from this beautiful work. The most fascinating thing about these few verses, at least to me, comes in, in verse 11. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. Now, we read John 1 with the benefit of having read the rest of John, along with Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the New Testament, the Old Testament, and a whole lot of other stuff. So we know John is criticizing the religious people of Jesus' day who refused to recognize Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God. And I can't help but wonder, why did they do that? These are the people who ought to have known better. Well, I find two really important reasons for why they rejected Jesus and didn't believe. The first, Jesus didn't look or act like he thought they should. He challenged their assumptions and expectations. Rather than exploring the questions and the differences, they just wrote him off. The second, Jesus brought light into the darkness, and many of them, particularly the religious leaders, they didn't want all that light revealing what they were doing in the darkness. Far better to get rid of Jesus than to let what they were doing become known. Far better, I think, to become a child of God through believing in Jesus and to let his, his light chase away all our darkness. This is John's hope for his readers. It is our hope, too. Let's pray together. Lord of life, bring us your light. Help us to see where our assumptions and expectations need to be challenged. Help us to step aside as the light of your love shows us your goodness at work cleaning up our badness. Teach us to trust Jesus through it all, never denying him, never running away from him and never rejecting him, even when he makes us ask tough questions. Amen.